It's World Heart Rhythm Week, and it's a time to raise awareness about irregular heart rhythms that affect people of all ages. And the most common type of irregular rhythm is atrial fibrillation, also known as AFib. And it's estimated that 2030, or by 2030, 12 million Americans will have AFib. In fact, about a year and a half ago, former Texans player JJ Watt announced that he had AFib. And joining us now is Dr. Cash with UT Health Houston and Memorial Herman joining us in the studio. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Good morning. Good morning. So can you just tell us a little bit about what is AFib? Well, as you mentioned, AFib is the most common irregular rhythm in humans. It is caused by tiny erratic electrical signals produced by some muscle and nerve fibers located on the back wall of the top left chamber of the heart. Just to uh, uh, say more stats, as you mentioned, a lot of Americans have this diagnosis. Nearly 5 million Americans have AFib currently. <laughs> and uh, almost 750,000 hospital admissions happen as a result of AFib annually. And we have to s spend almost $26 billion a year to treat this condition. Wow, it's interesting how common it is. So what are some signs and symptoms that people might need to look out for? Well, good question. The symptom intensity uh, covers a spectrum. Some may not feel it at all. Others may feel just mild symptoms like um, Fatigue, shortness of breath, dizziness, some skip beats. Um, and on the other end of the spectrum, it may be felt as intense heart pounding, heart uh, palpitations, and even more like uh, severe chest pain and chest pressure, which can mimic a heart attack. And at what point, you know, should you start to recognize that this is serious? I need to go see a doctor. I need to get this checked out. This isn't normal. I would say uh, if you feel any of those symptoms, you should go to your doctor because it's going to be difficult to tease it out. And how do they treat this? What treatments are offered for AFib? Well, currently the treatments are uh, th in three categories. Number one is medications. You use uh, rhythm stabilizing medications to control the condition. Number two is a temporary treatment, which is called cardioversion. We deliver direct current uh, voltage through the skin and temporarily you know, put the rhythm back to normal. And number three, the permanent fix is uh, by a procedure which is called ablation. And now uh, the newest version of ablation, which is called PFA, pulse field ablation, is in the market. Right. And is that the newest treatment that is being offered? Yes, that's the newest treatment. We use it at Memorial Hermann Hospital. Uh, by PFA, we use high voltage and ultra short uh, electrical pulses delivered inside the heart. This will cause nanopores in, uh, in the cell membrane and disrupts the cell membrane. Therefore, the culprit tissue will be terminated this way. Well, unlike the conventional method, which is called RF ablation, PFA is a non-thermal technology. Therefore, the chance of collateral damage to the surrounding tissue is minimal. Uh, hence, the complication rate is only 0.7%, less than 1%. And what happens if this is left untreated? Well, AFib, if left untreated, can cause weakening of the heart muscle, which is called, uh, called congestive heart failure, and that's a dangerous condition. Oh, my goodness. Well, what else should people be aware of with this condition that maybe, you know, surprises people typically? Well, um, again, it, it can cause uh, congestive heart failure. It can cause a condition named pseudo heart attack. Uh, but most importantly, um, I wanted to mention that all the risk factors that can cause heart attack and coronary artery disease can at the same time cause AFib. Two of those stand out for AFib. One of them is obstructive sleep apnea. One of them is obesity. That's why every time I have an AFib patient in the office, I'll screen them for sleep apnea. And if I suspect it, I'll send them to the sleep specialist. Wow, that's really interesting that those are correlated together. Thank you so much, Dr. Cash, for joining us this morning. This is all such helpful information. Thank you and for you, having me. You can find all this information in a replay of this segment online at click2houston.com. After the show, it'll be posted under the community section of the website. We'll be back after the break.